I'm Mikhail Kasabarad, I'm a cardiologist and clinical trialist at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute in Kansas City, United States. Well, Step Half Death Program uh, was the first clinical trial program to address a very important clinical question, which is uh, whether targeting obesity in people with heart failure and reserve ejection fraction can actually improve heart failure outcomes in that patient group. We know that uh, half pass heart failure with mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction is now the most common type of heart failure. And we know that majority of patients that have that type of heart failure also have overweight obesity. Uh, what we have not uh, fully understood until relatively recently is whether obesity is actually what's causing the development and progression of heart failure in many of these patients. And the step half that program was in fact specifically designed to test that hypothesis. So it was comprised of two trials, step half pass and step half pass diabetes. Both trials were done in people with obesity related half pass. Uh, the first trial in people without type two diabetes, the second one in people who also had concomitant type two diabetes. And the uh, two dual primary endpoints in both trials were um, a change in the Kansas City cardiomyopathy questionnaire clinical summary score, which is the gold standard of assessing patients related, uh, uh, I'm sorry, heart failure related symptoms and physical limitations in these patients. And the second uh, was change in body weight. Uh, in both trials, patients were randomly assigned to either some type 2.4 milligrams once weekly or matching placebo and treated for 52 weeks. And what those trials showed uh, was that uh, somatolutide 2.4 milligrams once weekly uh, significantly improved partially related symptoms and physical limitations as compared with placebo. And not only were the results statistically significant, uh, but they were uh, highly clinically meaningful because the treatment benefit was quite large. In fact, it was the largest treatment benefit in terms of improving partially related symptoms and physical limitations in this patient population that we had seen with any previous uh, pharmacologic intervention. In addition, uh, we saw improvements in exercise function measured by six minute walking distance. We saw substantial reductions in inflammation measured by high sensitivity CRP and also significant reductions in congestion as measured by internal probian T levels. Uh, we also demonstrated uh, since we published the main results of those two trials, that uh, use of somatotide also substantially lowered loop diuretic requirements. Uh, and in addition to that, there was a strong signal towards fewer clinical events of heart failure hospitalizations and urgent visits with somatotide as compared with placebo, even though the overall number of those events were relatively small because these trials were not designed as outcome trials. So I think collectively, uh, what the program has demonstrated was that in fact, targeting obesity in people with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction, at least this phenotype of obesity related half pass, uh, appears to be a highly efficacious strategy in improving heart failure related symptoms, physical limitations, and a number of other outcomes of importance in this patient population and, uh, really changed dramatically our approach to uh, thinking about obesity and its importance and also managing obesity in this patient population. Well, we uh, just recently presented two additional analysis from the Step FF program at the Heart Failure Society of America conference, uh, the first of which was concentrating on the effects of somatolutide on six-minute walking distance, which is an objective measure of exercise function. And uh, there are uh, probably just a few kind of key highlights from that analysis. Uh, one is that we found uh, a uh, clear relationship between worse exercise impairment at baseline and its association with a number of baseline characteristics uh, in the patient population, including greater degree of inflammation, greater degree of congestion, and also greater um, extent of adiposity uh, measured by uh, waist circumference and also BMI. Uh, we have uh, also found, which is similar to what we demonstrated previously, that semaglutide significantly improved 
six minute walking distance as compared with placebo. In this analysis, we additionally show that this benefit was already present early at 20 weeks, uh, which uh, is when maximal weight loss had not yet occurred. And that benefit was sustained at 52 weeks. And that these benefits were consistent across different subgroups of patients, demographic and clinical characteristics. When we combine the two treatment groups together, semaglutide and placebo, we see a significant relationship between greater degree of body weight loss during the trial and larger improvement in six minute walking distance. Uh, and finally, um, uh, the benefits of semaglutide and a variety of partial outcomes were consistent regardless of the degree of excess impairment at baseline. And we also see that while people who have worst excess tolerance at baseline has higher risk of serious adverse events uh, during the trial, uh, patients treated with semaglutide consistently experience fewer serious adverse events and fewer cardiac disorders than those treated with placebo. So that's the first of the two analyses. The second one actually is focused on frailty. Another very important concept and uh, important clinical question in this patient population. Uh, and in that analysis, we demonstrate that majority of patients in the step half program actually had significant burden of frailty. Uh, and uh, semaglutide uh, consistently improved uh, a variety of patient outcomes. Uh, regardless of frailty status, but when it comes to partially related symptoms and physical limitations in particular, those patients that were the most frail at baseline appear to derive even greater benefit in terms of improvement in those partially related symptoms and physical limitations. And furthermore, uh, semaglutide actually improved frailty itself uh, during follow-up. Uh, why is this important? Well, first of all, of course, many patients that have partially with preserved ejection fraction are frail. There have been some concerns uh, raised in the clinical community whether um, body weight loss in that patient population and some obligatory loss of lean body mass may actually translate in worsening frailty uh, in those patients that are uh, especially vulnerable to that. But we see no evidence of that in this analysis. In fact, we see, as I mentioned just now, improvement in frailty over time with semaglutide versus placebo, indicating that the benefits of semaglutide, whether they're uh, uh, through body weight loss and loss of adiposity, uh, or whether it's direct benefits uh, through other mechanisms, such as improvement in congestion, for example, or inflammation, uh, or a combination of those, um, uh, adheres to, um, uh, you know, overwhelm, uh, if you will, uh, or overcome uh, any uh, theoretical effects on modest uh, loss in limb body mass. Uh, so uh, I think it's reassuring as a clinical message here to the clinicians taking care of these patients that if these patients are treated with semaglutide, there appears to be, if anything, uh, a favorable effect on frailty over time. Now, this question uh, continues to be very important. We need to uh, uh, do additional studies to understand uh, uh, the effects of different anti-obesity medications uh, on uh, frailty. Uh, but I think this data, as I said just now, is quite reassuring. And, uh, you know, it's especially reassuring because this patient population, those with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction, uh, it tends to be an especially uh, frail uh patient population, which is exactly what we demonstrate in this analysis as well. About 60% of patients, in fact, had the highest burden of frailty at baseline. I think uh, the step half program, as I mentioned before, really opened up a whole new avenue of uh, research in this area, uh, specifically um, focusing on obesity, not just the comorbidity, uh, but uh, what appears to be a root cause of uh, development and progression of heart failure in many of these patients, and therefore a clear target for intervention. Uh, there is a lot more going on in this space. Uh, so the STEP half -Path program is certainly the beginning of that very important story in how we manage obesity-related half -Path, but it's not the end of the story. In fact, uh, the results of the summit trial uh, with serzapatide, a dual GLP-1 GIP agonist, 
uh, in this patient population with a vestibulated calf pass uh, were just announced through a press release a few weeks ago, and uh, the trial will be presented and hopefully published in the very near future. So we look forward to that. But the initial top line results that were announced with the press release also look quite favorable and broadly comparable to what we see in the step pathway program. And of course, there is a lot of development going on with newer, uh, even more potent uh, agents in this uh, disease space. So I think the future looks very bright and very promising in terms of um, uh, infrequent based on other uh, agents that are being developed for weight management, also being potentially uh, in the future um, uh, pillars of uh, disease modifying therapy in this patient population. But of course, there is a lot more work uh, than we need to do. We uh, uh, absolutely need to do additional larger uh, trials that have hard tertiary outcomes, such as uh, morbidity and mortality, cardiovascular death, and worsening partial events as a primary outcome. And I think at some point, it would also be incredibly important uh, to also understand what this management um, uh, uh, method meeting targeting obesity, whether it can provide potential benefits in people that have partially with reduced ejection fraction on obesity, uh, which used to be quite rare, but actually is becoming much more common. Uh, it's incredibly exciting uh, time in treating um, uh, patients with heart cell and preserved ejection fraction, just in the last uh, three years, really starting in 2021, we went from uh, having no proven disease modifying therapies uh, in this now the most common type of heart cell to having multiple uh, potential treatment options. And uh, it's an incredibly exciting development. Uh, and it's also um, uh, both extremely well uh, for what's the future of. Uh, and managing this challenging disease condition is going to look like.